Welcome to the course Algorithmic Design. Uh, this is already the result, but I'll show you a little bit how we can re recompute it, where it comes from. So I'll just turn off the grid here. So again, yeah, if, if you want to adjust a bit uh, the views, you can go here under this cog. So the different tabs here, standard, uh, there's the cog here, options. And then uh, I usually turn off this grid, so I don't like it. And then uh, here under it's bit hidden appearances, arrow down colors. Here you can change the background color. So um, yeah, you can do it for different types of views. So here I'm in wireframe, but I think if you go to shaded or rendered, you will have different different backgrounds. Okay. Um, and in this file, we already have, um, so we have just this, these layers here that we kind of pre, uh, uh, pre-saved. So there's a default layer. That's actually where the geometry is uh, kind of put in or created in. Uh, the relaxed geometry comes in here and is default. And then we have here two hidden layers. One is nodes movable, and the other one is nodes fixed. Okay, and you can see a little bit, uh, for example, here, nodes fixed. It's this one here, so uh, magenta color. And you can, see, so those are the points that are in the simulation, they're fixed, they're not allowed to move. And they are basically our boundary conditions, okay? Just actually zoom this. It's ZS, you can go zoom selected. So now it's kind of nicely centered here. Okay, so those are our um, fixed points. And then you can also turn on these movable points, okay? So all the other ones, that you see the black ones, they're the ones that are allowed to move. Um, so basically what we start with, we start with this. Okay, this is our input. I mean, of course, we could start with the flat surface and we can maybe also try that example as well. But here I already have um, set it up so it is a little bit more spatial. And you can see that I kind of tried to create a little bit um, like a tent structure. So um, yeah, there's like a triangle here and um, concerning the surface, the, the distances between these nodes, so if, uh, if I write in this distance, this is like a square grid, okay? The distance is one unit and in my case, one millimeter from each other. And this is important, okay? So it's important because um, uh, in the code, what we are doing, uh, we will calculate the neighbors between the points, okay? So we will say, we'll look at, for example, each individual point, for example, this one here, and then we will check the neighbors of that point. And we can calculate neighbors different ways, but one is through proximity. So we can say if there are, um, so the points that are kind of close to it or within, within a certain threshold will become the neighbors of that point. I mean, actually we are calling it a node. A point is just a position. So this is a node, okay? So these are now the neighbors of that node here. Um, and the length of this distance is one. So if I can write here length, it's one. Uh, and if I draw a line to the diagonal one, the length is of course longer. So length here is of course one times uh, square root of two. So it's one, 1.41 1 here, okay? So, uh, so we have a threshold where we say the neighbors uh, are within, you know, one, or it can be anything between one and this 1.41, okay? So if you don't want to include the diagonals as being neighbors, then we need to, um, uh, we need to basically have a number that is smaller than this 1.41, okay? Because all the diagonal ones have the same distance, except maybe here, uh, this on the top, maybe the situation changes a little bit, but here I was just careful when I was drawing this, that again, the square grid, the, the distances is always like one, okay? So that we don't get any, any weird uh, situations here at the kind of, um, at this sort of a ridge, okay? How, and, how does it yeah. um, influence the geometry, actually? The you will see, you will see. So we can try, uh, we can try playing with that and you will see, I will try to, we will first run the simulation with um, just looking at these four neighbors and we can try it again with including also the diagonals. So then the diagonals will also become neighbors and you will see that geometry will look different, okay? Because somehow the, um, uh, yeah, that there's more neighbors. So it's trying to find equilibrium, like the, 
it's the surface has a different topology then and it doesn't work as well it becomes i think it becomes kind of stiffer you will see and the good thing is that you can use this to create surface that has variable properties okay so you can actually create stiff parts of a surface by introducing extra extra connections of course you have to kind of design it but you know in theory you could, for example maybe say well actually this ridge here on the top i actually maybe i don't want it to deform so you can either fix these points here on the top or you can say there are extra connections here on the top and the dot whole the ridge will be stiffer so it will deform but maybe not not as much okay so you can start introducing um variable sort of stiffness or variable um uh yeah conditions on the surface and um, um in order to get you know to influence how this surface actually deforms okay but here we are looking at the simplest case where all the neighbors are defined like this and again when i turn on this relaxed form here you can see that all of these are, I mean, they're not squares anymore. They started off as squares, but they, uh, they deformed into rectangles or whatever. So there might not even be rectangles they, because they might not be flat at all, okay? They might be doubly curved. So obviously these panels here, they're not flat, okay? They are quads, uh, so, which means that they're ruled, okay? So this is a ruled, um, if you would span a surface between these, this is a rule surface and you can actually try to maybe construct it maybe later um this is a rule surface meaning um it can be described it's taking a uh, by taking a flat piece uh, which is maybe just this line here and you would kind of swipe it swipe it along the surface okay and many surfaces in architecture are like if they they look curved they might be doubly curved but they're actually ruled they're ruled surfaces and uh uh, examples from again um, Antonio Gaudi, um, this Sagrada Familia. You see a lot of um, shapes that are hyperboloids that are created through basically, you know, these sweeping sweeping forms or sweeping shapes. So you take basically a flat piece and you sweep it, and the surface that you get is a rule surface. And the advantage is that these can be constructed easily because when you cut stuff, usually your saw is <laughs> even if it's like a chainsaw it's a straight line okay so 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 that's why they are kind of you can see them in uh in architecture a lot okay so these are kind of very very close to the to being to being these yes but um but yeah so again uh desolation of surfaces is um you could do kind of a whole course just on that and i on purpose didn't really focus on on it too much even though it has kind of a lot of applications there are many ways that you can go go about it, but yes okay uh but actually, you know, if you want to build this in, for example, cardboard as a model, you can totally do it. Because if you take, for example, this strip here, um, I, I will actually show you maybe at the, at the, at the end how you can go, go about it. Okay, so you can actually create a surface in Rhino from this strip, and you can unroll this strip. Okay, and this, when you unroll it, you, you get a flat piece that when you laser cut, you can actually assemble it back up. Okay, so you can. Probably this surface here, you could rather easily construct um, from from uh, from from flat sheets. Okay. Um, okay. So I'm just show you there are multiple um, files here. Uh, this um, in the folder. So there's the dynamic relaxation. There's dynamic relaxation module, and then there's something called from module. Okay. So um, maybe I can just show you the module first. So the module is basically library, it's very short, that kind of contains the class network and the class nodes. And these are, we are basically using these to, to do this simulation. Okay, so you can package this in a separate file and then you can load it into another file. And that way you have separation between sort of some, let's say library functions and um and sort of maybe the place where you're actually designing your structure okay so because if you use dynamic relaxation maybe this part will never change okay so these are fixed things um and then uh, there are parts that are changing they're in a separate file so this is the module and then uh, this one is called from module so here you're basically just loading uh, loading this network class and the node class from the other file and you're just using it here so here the the code is actually very short okay so if you kind of 
take this for granted. So you take that this is sort of fixed and it works and maybe, you know, look, I gave it to you. So you know that it does its job or maybe you found it online. Then you can just leave this as it is and you can just run this part here. Okay, this is the part where maybe your design happens that where you want to tinker with things. Uh, so in that sense, this is a very, very short, uh, very short code. Okay, so I will actually just explain this uh, explain this um, immediately because that's kind of the simplest the simplest example okay so at the, at the beginning we <clears throat> as always load rhino scripts index as rs so that's the first library and then rhino geometry <clears throat> as rg and then we load also uh, this you know from dynamic relaxation module which is a file which is in the same folder it's here so if they're in the same folder then we can just write it, write it like this. We import uh, either functions or classes. In this case, two classes. Okay, so I mean, I call this a module, but it technically it's not. It's not a module, but we can think of it as a yeah. Just, we just load stuff from the other file. Okay, so they come in here. This network and node, and now they can just be used directly. Actually, even node we don't need. We just need the network. <clears throat> so we have two classes. We have the network class, which is which holds sort of. I mean, the network, the, the surface, the network of our surface, it's our surface basically, and also does the um, dynamic relaxation. And <clears throat> the node class is just contained within the network, okay? And I'll show you a little bit how they work. Uh, so the nodes, the node class handles individual nodes, and then the network handles collection of nodes. That's, the, that's, that's how it works. Okay, and then just the first part here, uh, these two functions, they are just selecting everything that is in the default layer and just deleting it. So at the beginning, so if you have any geometry or already simulation from before, this will be deleted. Actually, I just uh, still have to super quickly check if I'm recording. I am. Okay, good. okay and, uh, and then we are going to load objects from the layers so we basically use this function called objects by layer and we call the layer nodes movable and nodes fixed to load the objects that are inside and we and that's why uh important thing is that we have nothing else in these folders uh, in, in these layers okay so so you know this layer here nodes movable should only contain these points if i go here and i say in run i say select all I should only get these points, so 298 points. And if I'm in nodes fixed and I say select all, I should only get these six points. If I have more stuff in, so maybe I have some lines that are around, uh, then I will get errors. Then I would, in theory, here in the code, I would need to filter those objects. But again, then the code becomes a bit bigger. It's, it's uh, for now, I just try to keep everything as simple as possible. So we basically uh, just load these these objects directly from the layers and the names are here fixed um, and that's it so you know our option is would be you could select them so you could say there's a function called rs dot um, the autocomplete doesn't work but if I go here if you go help help topics run script syntax there is something called a get object yeah get object or get objects okay so here basically you can select so you get the prompt you can select objects from rhino you can do a filtering on them so you can filter for example um here you would maybe say you put condition one which means the rhino would allow you only to select points um so yeah you could select them but here it's just easier because you just load them uh, they're already there so we don't need to kind of do this extra clicking okay and then we define a few parameters um first is this neighbor proximity and if you remember the distance to the to the kind of orthogonal neighbors was one. Um, so we can in theory put here one, but sometimes it's good to give it just a little bit of a buffer um, to you know mm, to not rely on this sort of absolute precision. So you would instead of one, you would say maybe one point one. So you're absolutely sure that every orthogonal neighbor will be uh, will be taken into account. Okay, so again. Here, distance between the orthogonal neighbors is one. So one should, in theory, work. But again, just give it a little bit of a buffer. And it should, for sure, be smaller than the diagonal ones. OK, diagonal is 1.41. So we should just be smaller than that number. So we are here very, very safely. 
Okay. And then there are two other like stiffness. Um, stiffness is just a parameter. And if you change, you will see how the simulation changes. So this is basically um, in a way how fast the simulation is running. Okay. So I said before that we are moving the nodes. They are being moved according to forces. Okay. So um, the, the forces move these nodes. And basically this is then scaled by this factor. So if this number can be bigger, then everything will move faster. But we have a problem, like uh, we might get less precision. And, and sometimes if you have things that are very tight, if, uh, if you have nodes that are very close to each other and the stiffness is too big, then you will get very un un unpredictable results, okay? So in theory, you would want the stiffness to be small because you want the simulation to be as precise as possible. So in every iteration, the nodes will move just very little, very little. Again, in theory, you would want to have continuous movements. So in, your stiffness would tend to be towards zero, but then you would need infinitely many steps. So the simulation would take much longer. So there's a kind of something in between is you have some stiffness that is defined. And if you make sure that the nodes are not too close to each other, you will always get good, good results. Okay. So uh, for example, in next week, we're going to work with these lattices and there the stiffness is uh, of bigger concern because there are like way a lot more nodes and their configurations are more entangled. So there's like more of them closer to each other. So if the stiffness is too big, they you you will see then sometimes things might just explode. So sometimes these quantities can actually go to infinity. So simulation in, in a way breaks down. Okay, and then gravity here, we just set it to zero. So you can add additionally gravity. You can, it's just an external force that will just make your structure deform uh, in one direction. So that, that's how we can do uh, these catenary, catenary kind of walls. Okay, so we'll set that later. And that's it, then those are defined here. Then we create a network. Okay, so we create um, an object called the network. Here you can call it however you want. So I just call it the network with a small, uh, small starting letter, so small capital letter, small caps. Um, you could call it whatever you want. You can call it, for example, surface or structure or uh, whatever, design, something like that. But this name has to be the same. Okay, so this is the class network that is called from inside this module. This one has the defined name. It also starts with a capital letter. Uh, and then we pass in parameters inside. Um, and if you want to know which parameters need to be passed, you need to kind of a little bit peek inside here. So if you peek into the module and go here to the network class, it starts with self. So that one you can skip. And then these are the parameters that are passed into the network. And the ones that have this kind of equal something, this is, um, this is the default value. Okay, So these ones you don't need to pass. The default value for this parameter will be taken. So here default is for gravity zero. So if you don't pass in gravity here, uh, nothing will happen. Or, uh, the function will still work or the class will be created or object will be created. And you could set defaults for all the other ones as well, but sometimes you don't want to do it because um, you just want to force the user to basically give you as many parameters as possible. Um, okay, so this basically creates an object. It creates a network object and we just save it as this is the name of it. And that's it, like that object is now created and now we can do stuff. Okay, so one of the things that we can do, we can use this update method. Update method is defined here, and it basically does the dynamic relaxation. And we pass in the number of iterations. So you will see what happens if I pass a lower number or a higher number. It basically just does the dynamic relaxation, and it also draws it directly in Rhino. Okay, so this was sort of, in a way, the shortest code that I could write in order to run this. And, um, and yeah, let's, let's try to run it. So uh, you have to just make sure that you are that you selected the default layer. Okay, so we have to be inside the default layer um, because everything needs to be drawn there. We can all even uh, remove these nodes, movable nodes, fixed if you want. So you can they, they don't need to sh be shown in order to, uh, for simulation to run. And yeah, you can just kind of run it, and it's a bit again. Rhino is not really good for displaying animations. So that's why what I did now here, you can see it's very 
probably on your Zoom, it's also very laggy. But on my computer, it's also it's just kind of blinking all the time. Um, so it's not that nice, but uh, you can basically see how the simulation happens. Okay. So let's try to change a few parameters. Um, so for example, we can, again, increase the update. Um, so if I run it now, you will just see it, it, it will just continue um, further. But you can see that the surface is deforming less and less and less. Okay, so it's almost, well, it's reaching equilibrium and at one moment it will, it would almost stop. Okay, so it's not, I'm not sure if it's a 200, but you basically the nodes start moving less and less and you're kind of approaching this equilibrium configuration. Uh, so you could run it to whatever, 10,000, but the structural would just, the surface would basically not move anymore. It would, or it would move very, very low. Uh, again, we can speed this up by increasing the stiffness. So for example, I could put stiffness five, let's see how that works. Oh, I apologize. Uh, yeah, it kind of exploded. Okay, so the stiffness cannot be too big. Okay, so uh, the geometry just exploded. Maybe it's a bit too much. Uh, maybe here. Okay, so if you just double it up, you can see now the it just runs much faster. It, it runs much faster, but again, the steps are bigger. Okay, so you're doing a calculation, but you have bigger steps. And if the steps are too big, um, then the, you cannot reach an equilibrium because the point, you know, it's like, the best way that I could describe it is imagine that you're doing a painting and somebody tells you do a painting of a face. Okay, so there's a portrait, there's a picture of a face, and now you have to do a painting of a face. So it gives you a brush, but the brush is very thick. Okay, you have a very thick brush. And now you're trying to paint the face and you realize that you're just constantly smudging. You cannot do the details because the brush is too big. Okay, so then you say, uh, can you give me a smaller brush because I need to draw the, draw the details. Okay, you have a similar situation here. This stiffness is basically the, the, again, the size of the steps. So if you want to have better precision, uh, this number just needs to be smaller. Okay, so maybe we leave it to 0 0.1. And let's just try to see what happens if we change, put gravity in. Gravity will give us a bit weird results. Okay, maybe it's a bit too big. But the problem is the, well, yeah, it's a bit, uh, a bit too big. Maybe we put it to just very, very slightly 0 0.1. Something like that. Okay, so you know, real material has um, yeah, the real material has resistance. Okay, so the more you deform it, the more resistance it gives you. But here, this is not actually put in. Here, the this structure will just continue to deform. But basically, we are getting uh, uh, we are getting sort of this catenary structure. Or so maybe uh, let's put it to. Uh, let's go to 0 0.4. So the simulation is the same. It's just that at every step, we are just adding an extra force. And well, gravity, I apologize. So here, this is, of course, anti-gravity. Okay, So the, um, um, it's the gravity in the opposite direction. Or so it's the, the positive gravity. We would have to put the negative number here in order to make it actually act like gravity so it can start going down. Okay. But if you look at these as, um, if you want to flip them to get basically compression only structures, uh, then we just flip the number here. And, you know, Antoni Gaudi had to, he had to construct uh, these hanging chain models, and then he would weld the chains together. Or they would, I, I guess they would actually measure everything in the spot. But basically, if you want to create a model, you would kind of have these hanging chains. And then you would somehow fix them either by welding the connections or maybe and you know spraying them with glue or something, and then you would flip it, and then you would get compression only structures. So I can actually show you here. You can just take this and rotate it around this axis for 180 degrees. And when my rhino unfreezes, you get you get basically um, yeah, like a like a dome structure. So we can try to do a few uh, few other versions. Actually, save this as um, on class, put it like this on class 2022. Okay, I'll show you a little bit later how that code works kind of in, uh, directly or how it works um, uh, um, 
in detail, but now I want to just use this opportunity to, to draw a little bit, um, to just create like a custom, a custom design on the spot. Okay, so you can do it very easily. Uh, so let's first draw in the default and then later we will move all the objects in appropriate layers. So you can draw a point, I can go here, draw a point, I can type in zero and place it at the beginning here, okay? And then you can copy paste it, but the easiest way is you can use that Rhino function called array, okay? Array and you say number in X direction, maybe we're gonna have something that is hmm, maybe 40 uh, times 20. Okay, and then Z direction, that's one. And then X spacing is one, Y spacing is one, and I think it should be okay, hop. And now they're created, okay? So we just used Rhino to kind of quickly draw, um, to quickly draw a grid, okay? And I can just take them all and I say change layer and move it into nose move, okay? Up, uh -huh, there, off. Okay, uh -huh, okay, yeah, we have actually, sorry, we actually do. Um, let's, I will just delete these ones that are already here. So let's delete these ones. And okay, here now I can change them. So I select them. I can also go here on the bottom, click here on default and just switch it to nodes movable. Okay, now if we just run this as it is, then all the points will move. And actually, we can maybe even try to see, we'll see what kind of happens. Um, so if I just run it, you will see that it's kind of falling down, okay? But also the surface is becoming smaller and smaller because all the force, all the, um, all the nodes are now attracting each other and eventually they will just be squeezed into a point, okay? So it's almost like hiring, again, a stocking like elastic surface that you just let and you let it fall. Okay, so that's obviously not really that interesting. Uh, but interesting things happen when we start fixing things. Okay, so uh, let's fix and let's play a little bit as if this is like a like we're doing a proper design. Okay, so I'll just select some of these points here, and I will fix them in space. So maybe these ones here, and again change layer put it to nodes fixed. Okay, now we have like a boundary. And um, uh, maybe, maybe do something like this. Change layer, nodes mobile, maybe like something like this, okay. So maybe we leave a gap here. Uh, maybe we can actually delete some points, okay. So they don't need to all be here. So you can, for example, create a hole like this. And maybe a smaller hole here. And maybe a smaller hole here. Okay, so now what I'm doing, I'm just, in a way, designing uh, designing a structure, okay? And uh, let's actually do, yeah, let's let's actually do, uh, maybe we fix these ones here just on the corner, okay? Change layer, no, it's fixed. Okay, so we basically, do, we are basically creating a design, okay? So we are, we are saying these are on the ground, they are fixed, there are some holes, and, um, and then all the other ones in between are, dynamic, so they are part of this membrane, they are allowed to move. So let's try that. And let me actually save this. And let's actually flip the gravity back positive, so it goes up. And if I just run this, yeah, you can see how it's kind of deforming and um, how you're getting the, um, yeah. Okay, I can just turn these ones off. Okay, so this is already some vaulted, some vaulted structure. Uh, you can notice that as soon as you make a hole, this hole tends to sort of expand very rapidly. Uh, that's why often we have tent structures, and you want to, uh, you want to create like a window. Then you need to put something very stiff. So you need to put some kind of tensile reinforcement around here. Okay. Um, this would be, for example, maybe a steel cable or something. Um, so that would be kind of how you would have a, uh, you'd have some stiffness and that would maybe then not deform that much. So this hole would not, because this hole was very small, if you remember, it just kind of started to expand. Again, I always use this example of um, stocking. So if you know, if you have a, a sock or a stocking and somebody just makes a, 
a small hole, it tends to just rip. And it's be exactly because of this, okay? Because basically, uh, as soon as you have a small hole, uh, the forces, I mean, the way the forces work is that they tend to kind of rip this or make this hole bigger. And then, of course, if this is a real material, you know, the stocking will kind of break here as well. And then you have even a bigger hole, and then that one also expands. So you have kind of a progressive tearing of a, of a sock, okay? So here you can see something a little bit similar where these holes are kind of becoming very, uh, very, very big. Okay, uh, let me do, so if you want to save this structure, you can create a new layer. You can say something like, um, you know, um, surfaces, and you can select last. So everything that was created in the last kind of program run, and you can say change layer, and it's changed here to surfaces. So now, if you change the color here to something that we can see maybe dark, maybe, maybe blue. Okay, now this will be uh, preserved. Okay, so you can also move it somewhere. Uh, so this one will now not be deleted. I just want to show you something else. Uh, kind of try to quickly show you. So let's let's do the let's do the same example, but let's move some of these. So maybe. Um, just want to create a little bit more spatial, spatial story. Ah, yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. The problem with moving is that, yeah. The problem with moving is that, uh, yeah, yeah. You have to make sure that the distances are always kind of. Um, you 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 have to make sure that the distances between the points remain the same. So, for example, I cannot or similar. So, I cannot, for example, take these and and just move them up here. Uh, because now the distances between these ones and these ones are so far that these ones will not create, they will not become neighbors with the ones on the bottom, okay? So when I move, I can move things, but I have to be a bit careful. So let's do something like, I can take, for example, these ones here, okay? And I can rotate it in space. I can say rotate 3D. Now I can define an axis. And axis is here, and I start here, and now I can define some angle. Okay, so maybe six degrees, but maybe it's minus six degrees. Okay, so you see now I kind of got, um, um, I mean, I deformed everything, but you know, uh, the distances here are still one or so this is now one, uh, this is one, and I. I didn't kind of overdo it. So the distance here between these ones is still kind of two. So um, so these the, the topology of this surface will be the same as the one before. Let's actually do the same thing uh, with these guys here. So on this side, rotate 3D. Um, this is the axis. This is the starting point. And then see if it's 60. Yeah. It's positive six in this case. Okay, so now this is our these are our boundary conditions. Should save this. And uh, yeah, let's let's try to run this. Actually, gravity. Let let's put gravity to zero. Okay, let's just try to run it. Okay, yeah, we, we are not getting a really a uh, spatial story uh, because somehow the, the stop part is just very flat. So we actually still have a lot of flatness. We have only some uh, kind of became a bit spatial, but only in this area here. Uh, let's actually put back the gravity. So maybe you put four, let's see what we get. So now everything should be formed a little bit up. Yeah, maybe this fault is not that, that interesting. Okay, it's a bit of a, it's a, it's something. Okay, I will just, um, I'm just, I'll move this one. Um, maybe I move it a little bit here. Okay, change layer, just move to the surfaces here. Okay. Um, 
Okay, so this is basically how you can how you can work uh, work with these. Um, yeah, this is how you can work with these. I would like to just show a little bit how the code how the code works, or a little bit kind of what is behind here, uh, behind these two functions or these two uh, classes. And again, if you have questions, you can for sure ask. Um, so that's the that is the module. Okay, so we basically just instantiate this network, and the network kind of handles the 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 nodes inside here. Um, but basically, the node we have a class node. So if you remember, we went through this kind of how to create classes in Python. Uh, class is like an object container that can contain attributes, which is just data and functions. So methods are kind of internal functions. So it's a it's it, it is like a complex complex object that has internal functions and internal attributes, which is just data. Um, and one of them is called node. And you can see here the node is actually rather simple. The node has no function, no methods. So there is no really functions inside, except we have only attributes. Okay, so we define internal attributes position, so pause. Uh, there is one called movable. So we just define if the node is movable or not. So is it allowed to move or not? Uh, we defined a list of neighbors. So every node stores the list of its own neighbors. In that way, when we perform the computation or relaxation, we always go through all the nodes and then through all the neighbors of every node. Okay, but the node does not have, if you have you know 1,000 nodes, it doesn't mean that 1,000 nodes have each 1,000 neighbors. No, 1,000 nodes, each one has maybe, well, in this case, they have four neighbors, or these ones on the edge have three neighbors, or these ones in the corner have only two. Okay, so um, that means this list is either two or three, or in most cases it is uh, it is four. Uh, and then we also store force. Okay, so the node has internal force, which is this residual force from the lecture. So the the residual force of the node that's basically the uh, we can translate this directly to, to velocity. Okay, the force acts on the node and makes the node move in space. And this is just a, that's why we use this RG, so random geometry library. Uh, just use this vector 3D. So it's just a three dimensional vector. At the beginning, we just define it as zero. So it's a zero vector, has three components, but uh, all the values are zero. So at the beginning, none of the nodes move. Okay, and that, so this is a very, very small part. And this node is then kind of included in the network. Now, net network is much bigger. There's a lot more happening there. So when we create the network object, first we like we define all the internal attributes. So we define all the nodes. So all the we create all the nodes then. So all the mobile nodes, all the fixed nodes. Uh, and we basically create, um, yeah, this is a bit. Um, these two steps, basically what we do, we, we take the points, okay? So from, from Rhino here, so the here we, what we do, we, we get these objects, okay? From Rhino, these are points, these points here, and they are just passed into this, uh, in, into this network object, okay? So they're just points that are passed. And in this step, these points are turned, well, we extract our coordinates, so we create a list of points, and here, for every point, we just create a node object, okay? And uh, the movable node or fixed nodes have um, movable parameter defined as false, so they are not allowed to uh, they're not allowed to move. And the ones that are movable have this parameter defined as true, which means they are allowed to move. Well, that's this movable parameter here, okay? This all happens at the very beginning. We just kind of uh, create a list of all the nodes, and actually, in the end, we I think we are. We just merge them all into one list, okay? So then we have a mixture of these movable and, and fixed nodes that are in the same list, and this list is called nodes, okay? So self.nodes is the network.nodes in this file here. Uh, it's just a list that contains all the nodes, okay? And then we have the main method is this update, which just runs for a certain number of iteration, and it's always the same. I mean, first, we have to calculate the neighbors. So we go, you can see the structure Always, so we go through all the nodes in the nodes list. So we, 
you know, four node in self node. So the network has the list nodes. That's this one here. We get every node out, and then we go actually we go actually twice through the same list. So we check every node against every other node when we are calculating neighbors, and we check. Um, this is how we are trying to uh, get the distance between the nodes, and then if the distance is smaller than this proximity, we append it to the neighbors list of the node. Okay. So this is actually quite. Um, this takes some time, okay? Because if we have n number of nodes, then we have n squared number of operations. But this we have to do only once. We have to do this only at the very beginning, because we have to calculate we calculate the nodes, the neighbors only at the very beginning, uh, and we assume that the neighbors don't change, because somehow the topology of the surface stays the same. So this is computationally intensive. This one here. But we have to do it once at the beginning, so it's 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 also kind of fine. Um, okay, then the neighbors are defined. Then we calculate forces. Um, so in this update, basically we always go calculate forces, calculate displacement, and then draw the whole network. Then again, calculate forces again, calculate displacement, and draw. Okay, so how do we calculate forces? We go again through all the nodes, and then through their um, I oh, know, sorry, this is neighbors here. Okay, we go through all the nodes and then we just go through all the neighbors of the nodes. Okay, so we don't go through 1000 nodes, we just go through the neighbors, which might be up to four. Uh, we create some kind of, um, we update this force. Okay, so we are basically just, um, um, so if you, you know, if this is the node and then these are the distances, these are the vectors that go to its neighbors. We imagine this as being vectors. Okay, so if I select here in line of these lines, and I say dir, uh, I can't really see because this is all white, but uh, I can just quickly change the background here. So maybe to some gray, light gray. Okay, so now you can see it better. Um, when I select these ones and I say dir, I get um, these are directional or these lines are direct. Okay, so um, so I just basically create, turn this into vectors, and I add these vectors together. So geometrically, the way you add vectors together, you take these ones, okay, copy, paste. I mean, we do this in code, but <clears throat> geometrically, this is what is happening. Okay, so we have these four vectors, and then if you add them together, you just put the ends of uh, ones, oh, sorry, you, you take the ends of ones, put them at the beginning of the other ones, and uh, and in theory they should. If uh, we actually messed up with the gravity, so this residual force here is the original res residual force <clears throat> of the from dynamic relaxation plus gravity. Okay, so this line here, this would be the resultant the residual force. Okay, that's how much the node would would move. Um, but we do this in code. Okay, so. Um, mathematically, uh, this is done with uh, which just this formula here. Okay, so we just add basically uh, we subtract the position of the neighbor from the position of the node, and we get basically this vector between, and we just add it for every neighbor, and it's like just vector addition. This is actually this is very fast. Then every node has this internal attribute force. Um, this for the it's it's now set and it's basically this residual force. Okay, so it's somehow um, the resultant pull between all the neighbors of the node. It's kind of stored in here, and then we just in the calculate displacement. It's even shorter. We are going again go through all the nodes. Uh, then we just basically if the node is movable, we just uh, multiply this force, which is a vector, with the stiffness. We scale this force or by the stiffness, and then we just add it to the position. Uh, mathematically, what we are doing, we are translating the point. Okay, so we have an initial point, we add a vector to it, we get a translated point. And again, we multiply it with this stiffness. So we scale this force uh, because otherwise the steps would be way too big. These forces are actually very big. Uh, so we just want this, we want the direction to be the same. But we want the amount, the magnitude to be much, much smaller in order to get finer grain. Okay, so this is also kind of very fast. Now you can also ask, like, if I'm going here through all the nodes and here through all the nodes, 
then why can't I just, I mean, I could in theory merge these two. Or I could merge these two loops. Usually it's better to have less loops, of course, uh, code runs faster, but we cannot really do it or we could do it, but we'll get imprecise results. Okay, so we have to actually first update all the forces. And then before we move any points, we have to update all the forces. And then at the end, we have to basically move all the points in a way at the same time. And if you do it, if we update the force and then move the point at the same or move the node at the same time, this would be computationally faster because we would have one loop instead of two. But this will give us again imprecise results because then the next node would calculate not the position of the you know neighbor how it was before, but already an updated position. So we would get this kind of weird, um, yeah, that the calculation would just not be precise, even though you could probably pull it off that you would maybe get a very comparable result. But uh, here we just do it in two loops. So it's mathematically kind of um, mathematically more precise, okay? And that's it. Then we just calculate forces and calculate displacements. They are just done over and over. And of course, the forces are always different. In every iteration, the forces are different because when we apply displacement, the positions of nodes change. So they're not the same positions. So the forces are also not the same. Um, so in a way, forces affect position, position affects forces. Forces affect position, position affects forces, okay? So it is a loop and, um, and yeah, it's kind of, that's sort of what happens in the iteration. In the lecture, if you remember, um, I was explaining the dynamic relaxation algorithm. There was a loop between step, I think, three and step six. It was just an arrow that goes back. That's basically this loop here, okay? okay. Yeah, this loop, this loop here. Okay, and then the last thing, last part that is still left is this drawing. And here, I will not go too much into it. This basically just draws um, everything that happens. And uh, there's a bit of more code, but in theory, you can just draw objects in Rhino, but just saying, you know, RS, so Rhino script syntax dot add line. You can just add a line and to draw this uh, uh, connection. But if you do it like that, then we are going to be a little bit too slow. So um, here is actually where the lines are done. We're just going to be a little bit too slow. So this simulation will just run even slower than it already runs. So this is just a little bit more, uh, a bit more code. We use the, the, the lower level control with the script context. And this is just faster drawing of lines. So it's just so that the simulation runs faster, but basically the code is just, this is just drawing lines. And then this run away is making everything run smoothly on your screen, even though it's not that smooth. But again, Rhino is not really a perfect environment for creating animations. So what I try to do here is basically a real time animation and it kind of works, but um, this is not the perfect software for that, okay? Um, but yeah, it works kind of does, does, does what we need. Okay, and that's it. And then, um, uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's basically that's that's kind of that's everything. Um, I just want to show you to illustrate a bit this point of um, how you know what does you know it graphically happens here. It's a bit harder to do it in this more complex example. I just open again the. Um, I'll just save this. I'll open one of these. The relaxation here. So just the old file or the original one. Okay, here we are. I'll just change the color here to black. Okay. Uh, basically, if you understand graphic statics, you will basically understand this, this as well. You could resolve all of these graphically, but we just do it through code or so there's this relation between algebra and kind of um, and sort of geometry. Um, and if you do it maybe on paper, you do it with, uh, like graphically using graphic statics, but here we just use algebra. So uh, you do it with the code, but basically all of these have, this whole code has geometric interpretation. Oh, that's, that's, that's kind of the cool thing. So I want to just show you a little bit here. This was the surface that we started with, if you remember, these are the, the boundary conditions. And so let's actually run this maybe for even further. So maybe, uh, update network update 300 i'll just run it so i want to show you what i mean when i say that the force diagram for node closes okay so if you have a closed force diagram um we have residual force zero 
and then the node will not move anymore. And if this is true for all the nodes, then we reached equilibrium. Okay, so all the forces are in balance. So um, if I, and I'll just take one of these ones that are a little bit more deformed. So maybe let's this example here or this node here. Okay, so this is a node here. Put a point here. This is a node that is moving and the forces that are acting on this node are these four forces. So let's take them out. Um, and the way we do it in the code, we just say that the force is directly proportional to, to this length. Okay, so that we can almost see the vector here. The vector's magnitude is kind of visible from this drawing, okay, this diagram. And now the assumption is that these four forces, they need to balance each other out, okay? But they're a little bit spatial, so it's not really clear if they're balancing or not. But basically, I should be able to, I should be able to, to close this in a triangle or sorry, not a triangle. So here it's always not a triangle, it's like a quad, but um, I need to get the order right. The problem is that sometimes this order is a bit, uh, yeah, I have to be a bit smart how I do it. So of course, if I would know, yeah, if, if I would know the, the exact um, uh, order, so the, the direction of these vectors, then I would know exactly the order but here I don't really see it, but uh, okay. But look, I took these four lines and I actually managed to almost close them, okay? So there's a small gap here and this is the res residual force, okay? So this vector here or this line here represents the vector, okay? So these four, ah, yeah, I think I closed it here, okay? So basically these four forces, they will be added up. This is the result. It, again, I'm not sure exactly which direction is it. It's either maybe this one or maybe it's this one here. Hard, hard to know. Um, and then this will be scaled by the stiffness. So, you know, scale, uh, click here, and then stiffness is 0 0.1. So it will become this. Okay. So in the next iteration, this point will move this much. Okay. In this direction. This is what will happen with the point. So you can see that um, already for this. Already for this simulation, we are kind of almost close to the equilibrium because these ones on the edge might actually move a lot more than the ones that are here um, because they're just way more deformed. Okay, so this is kind of the graphical interpretation of what is happening in the code. We are calculating this residual force and we are just applying the translation. And, and, and that's it. And again, this will never become zero, but it will sort of approach it very neatly, and then at one moment, we can just stop the simulation to say, uh, we are kind of, we are done.